Nato se popo tu se se so ti tu si Pa te I'm born into an Egba Ogun State, a Belkota musical family, the Olumide family. It's the heartbeat, therefore, of all of us as the Olumide family is one that has revolved around music and we've grown with music all our years. I grew up the daughter of now late Admiral Femi Olumide and he was the first indigenous officer in charge of the Naval Dockyard, which was right next door to NTA in VI at Wilmot Point. And I grew up with Barbie shows. Uncle Atalade, when they were done with Barbie show, the recording on Saturday, they would move to our home and they would have the after events, after show. So I grew up with all of that. The celebration of jazz was also something my father was very much into. And um, many nights when he would come home from work, he would meet me curled up in his chair waiting for him and the first thing I would hear would be he would have this big bass headphone just placed on my little head at the age of seven and I'll just be hearing Nina Simone, Ella Fitzgerald and um, yeah so for me jazz, music, all of these were part of my heritage and so as Dio I'm very musical. so much more than all if you simply pay attention to more something's working in the sound something heard of you why jazz why did you choose jazz and i tell them hey i didn't choose jazz jazz chose me Jazz in Nigeria started from when the people called Creoles, the Saros, you know, people from Syria alone after the abolishment of slave trade, when they decided to come back to Nigeria, one thing they brought with them is jazz. And then today jazz has given birth to a lot of other genres of music. Um, so jazz actually, jazz was brought to us. And then one of the foundation of jazz in Nigeria is actually not even a Nigerian, it's Iti Mensa of Ghana. He had a big band, and then many of our composers and artists, they followed that trend. So the first set of jazz composers um, are probably Bobby Benson. a lot of big band jazz and then they were all influenced by big band of Benny Goodman and then you know you know many of them were influenced and then come Fela, Fela Ransom Kuti, he wasn't a Nikola Kuti then, it was Ransom Kuti, he started hosting a show on Radio Nigeria, a show on jazz music and um, but Fela, Fela was not someone who you would tie down to uh, just a jazz show. He wanted more. He wanted to do more than just hosting jazz music. So he started the first basic, unique jazz band, which is called the uh, um, Fela Ransom Kuti and the Jazz Quintet. If you call a woman Africa woman, she no go green. Eh, Abi? She go say Abi lady. Fela in singing that brought us to our own place of recognizing our true identity. 
In the early years, what we had was people trying to sound like the American jazz um, progenitors. People were trying to sound like the big bands, um, New Orleans jazz and all this. But um, at a certain period, the issue of identity came in, you know, there's no way you play music and then the audience wants to receive it also as a say. We are Africans, we are Nigerians and then we needed to, uh, I think Fela did a lot of um, work in this aspect. At the time when Fela's revival started, everything changed. So although, yeah, he was still playing jazz, but then he started playing high life jazz and it brought a lot of African elements into it. So all the artists and composers took a clue from Fela's music and then we started doing African things. We started putting up African idioms, African culture into jazz. And so if it, the jazz you listen to in this part of the world is actually different from what you will listen to um, in America or in, anywhere else because our culture is now mixed with our kind of jazz. The likes of Yinka Davies, um, Ego, Mike Aremu, and then, you know, um, Lagbaja, you know, they, they are unique, they produce unique sounds. It's, it's a lot of African elements in their jazz music. set out to be a singer. I wanted to be an actor, a fine artist, an agriculturist. Um. So singing to the back burner. But I started acting, building my craft from 16, 17. My first impression was First Act 77. Made a strong impression, but I still didn't get it until one fine day I found out that the singers outside the country gave expression to words. Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, and Billie Holiday. They painted a picture for me. Just close your eyes and you can see everything they're singing about. Uh, I'm looking for something soothing. I mean, that's what jazz does, you know. It relaxes you, it serenades you. So, here to have a beautiful time. And of course, with 2020, and now we're here. I mean, it's something to be thankful for. And why not jazz it up? I love talking about life and the beauty that we create every day when we go out on the coming. When we greet our fathers and mothers on the streets. Culture, cultural exchange, really and truly, it's all about us as a people, our communal living. I miss it.
Wow. Splendid. Wow. <laughs> it was amazing. I think jazz is spiritual. It kind of just connects with you, right? And when it's Yinka Davis, it takes you somewhere else. She's just an enigma, really. There is something that speaks to you when you listen to jazz. And um, with jazz in Nigeria coming from the 60s till date, I think it, we have come a long way. And um, this, was, this was exceptional this evening. soul alive every human being alive is unique you can want to sound like somebody else I want to sound like Ella Fitzgerald and yet I sound like me so the best thing you can do is to give yourself to express what I've been trying to say for years. This is exactly what I've been trying to say. Expressing yourself in sound. That is the explanation of jazz. Jazz gives expression to you. The light is staring at me in the face and I'm wondering exactly why the man put it there. That is jazz. You're laughing, exactly. That is jazz. Now, now putting it into words and making the person listening laugh along with you that is the explanation and the expression passed on to the other We have a sister symbiosis, the two of us, we just connected over the years and um, the jazz in us is like a five and six heartbeat. If she does something, I respond. I do something, she resonates. And um, Yinka Davis, I mean, just two months ago, she lost her son and um, she's translated her pathos into a place of performance so you don't feel her pain. We're able to embrace her in this. And it's not about grief, but it's about a growth. I've seen her just emerge. And for me, she is the Africa culture ambassador of jazz. I always call her the first lady of jazz. And she corrected me the other day. She said, no, I'm not. Auntie Frank Kuboye is. And I thought that was so honoring. And that's just thinking, because she's just basic, real, she takes what is dialectical from our tribal Yoruba ethos. But Yinka can do Chinese, Japanese, French, um, German. I mean, she, she just, she's replete with so much spontaneous ingenuity with her songs and then with her persona. She's just so real. So um, for me, I celebrate her. Who else? Uncle Tunde Kubuyo of Jazz 38. Um, amazingly, he impacted my life in two very unique ways. He used to coordinate school debates. And that's where I was trained up as a debater from Queen's College. And he was the one that told me that, little girl, nobody's expecting you to fail or to mess up. That freed me. But there was something much more than that. The jazz grew with me. And then later on in life, coming into Jazz 38 to do some performances and things like that, the jazz there and his mentoring with Auntie Fran 
just did so much to bring me into a place of connecting with my inner voice and my, my soul. Today at 74, I celebrate and I celebrate Jazz 38 as part of the history. Uncle Wally Bucknov, RIP Blessed Memory, he set up the Nigerian Naval Band. My dad brought him into the Navy. They set up the band together. They were all into the jazz. We used to have those events. At, so that's Uncle Wally Bokno of Blessed Memory. Kunle Bolarinwa, RIP also of Cave Ibado. Those of us who were in Ibado, in those days, University of Ibado, and all, all the big boys and big girls then. Uh, you must mention Cave. Everybody like, come on, you know, we're just like a tribe. And it was all the jazz and everybody just coming together. So when you mentioned the Steve Rhodes voices trained me, Bongo Zikwe, Kokro Adorn, Bobby Benson, um, it just doesn't stop. At Alade, who had the preachers, and then from there we started having so many older musicians come up. Elder Steve Rhodes of Blessed Memory, Fela Shuwandi, they had this jazz band and dance group. And then, so fast forward to today, what do we have today? We have a lot of intelligent, young, brilliant artists. <laughs> Now that's the idea, trying to make the audience feel the music with me. So um, I got to a point where I realized that audience sh should also be part of the process. So at times I come on stage with the aim of bringing my audience into the music. At times I make the music there, there and there on stage. So I get them to say something and we start making music on stage. So I'm enjoying this as much as the audience are enjoying the music too. Trying to introduce this kind of style to a new audience, it's, it's, it's not that easy, but we love jazz. It's been a journey. It's been a journey of um, over a decade. Listening, 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 working, working, working hard at this. Then um, at some point, I realized that I, 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 knew, I know so much, rather, and bringing it out in a way that is different was, my, was, was key. So a little try and error here and there, a little try and error here and there. Okay, can I do something that no one does? Is it possible? Can I create an experiential music? Can I create experiment with music? So those were the questions I started asking myself and it brought me to this part of my music, of my jazz music. So now I'm thinking, okay, the next show, how can I create an experience that they won't forget? You can't take away the essence of jazz as it relates to one's spirituality. Uh, it gives you that opportunity to truly, truly think deep. Yeah, because that's one music that, a genre that can take you to you know, across the globe and back, and still feel good with yourself. They say when you're moody, you listen to jazz, not necessarily so, but when you really want to be alive, you listen to jazz. I love jazz. I listen to Manu de Pango, listen to all those great guys, and then I say to myself that, look, if there is anything that Africa can produce that will be unique to Africa, it is African jazz. I started playing from a very young age. I could remember that at the age of seven, I performed at the ECOWAS conference here in Abuja, Sheraton Hotel. I was the era of General Ibrahim Badamose Babangida when many head of states came to Nigeria for the ECOWAS conference. I went to schools that have history of music, like CMS Grammar School has history of great people like Fela Shuande. In fact, there is no way you mention jazz music and then Fela Shuande won't come in. Um, at Alade, you know, these people who really, they were jazz, they've attended the same school. So there is this tree behind my um, evolution. I also studied music, studied at the Muzon, then went to University of Winneba, you know, to do classical music, 
and then I delved into African music. <laughs> The experience for me is all-encompassing. It goes beyond the music. What do they see? What do they feel? You get it. So the idea of experience for me is to evoke different emotions. You know, I want people to, I set the mood for people to say, wow, okay, this is it. He's taken music and turned it into a tapestry of technology, of the message, of what is indigenous to us but clearly what is still a global product that anywhere in the world you can embrace it, make it part of a Nigeria mandate to impact the world. You see, I was there when Jasper stepped her beautiful feet on this Nigerian soil. I was there when E.T. Mensa launched his band in 1961. And when the expatriates were coming back in the 40s, I was there. You know, I remember it vividly as we waited by the shores, you know, waiting to welcome them. And what did they come with? Gold? Nah. They came with yeah. Playing this character is like, uh, a lesson in the history of jazz for me because there's so many things about jazz I didn't know that you know playing this character made me uh, understand and particularly jazz when it comes to Nigeria what Ni what jazz was uh, how it grew in Nigeria today is a living proof that jazz is still very much alive and you know present with us Merging the whole conversation of music, history, and education really is the impetus for this platform and this expression of this genre, not just as music or the sound of music, but the story of music in the Nigerian genre of jazz. lady kept crying throughout the show and I couldn't but go backstage to go and apologize to the crowd and beg them, give me some few minutes, I shall be right back. I was, she just couldn't stop crying. That was one of the very few experiences in my young life that you're watching a show and a lady just kept crying. She's happy, but she just kept crying. Now, I can't. You like, you know, is the proverbial Jesus leaving the 99 sheep and going after one? That's exactly how he felt. I had to, do you know, I'll just say, I will be right back after this time out. I'll, I'll go back and I'll go and sit with her. I'm sure. Okay. I hope you're fine. Try again. Sir, you can't, you can't, you can't buy that with money. You can't pay for such a such an experience. I cannot be who I am without the music. Music has been life to me. It is an explanation of a movement, of a, of a journey. <laughs>